All right, last question. The difference of a number and two is multiplied by three to give a new number. All right, okay, let's talk about this. This is kind of a magic trick, right? Think of any number. Think of a number. Now, find the difference between that number and two. What does difference mean? Hmm. Well, this is, difference means subtraction. The weird thing is, it's kind of hard to tell based on this, how it's worded. I would never say this, the difference of a number and two, it's weird. Which one subtracts which? I think it's saying, think of a number and then subtract two from that number. So I, I think it's saying, think of a number, find the difference between that number and two. Okay, so for instance, if you think of 5, the difference between 5 and 2 would be 5 minus 2 would be 3. It's possible that it's saying um, 2 minus the number. So the difference of 1 and 2 would be 1. No, I think it's like this. I think it's what it's saying. is Think of a number and then subtract 2 from it. That's the difference between that number and two. Okay, that's what I would say. Now, you got it? So I'm thinking, okay, I found a number. All right, I'm thinking five. Find the difference between that number and two. Okay, that'd be uh, three. The difference is three. Now multiply that by three. So I multiply this number I just thought of by three. And that gives you a new number. That gives me a new number. Let's try it out. Let's pick out the number negative two. And I got this little fly buzzing around. You can probably see him on the screen here. Ugh, drive me nuts. All right, negative two. I'm gonna subtract two. So negative two minus two is negative four. Now multiply that by three. Negative four times three. Let's see, four times three is 12, but negative. So negative 12. All right? I should be making you guys show your work, right? I'll do that for this one. All right, next one. Take a number, negative one, subtract two from it. So negative one minus two. That gives you, uh, let's see, that'd be negative three, right? Multiply that by three. Negative three times three is, let's see, three times three is nine, but it'd be negative, right? Okay, cool. Uh, zero. Zero. Let's see here. Okay. Well, wait, 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 wait. Bus 94 is here. Students riding bus 94. Your bus is here. Thank you for the interruption. All right. Here's a hint, guys. Remember what we were talking about before where your, uh, the number that's being multiplied by X is your difference. Remember that up here? Up here. Oh, there it is. 2x, so your pattern is going up by 2, right? Well, I can just do that here. What my pattern is, it's going, actually, you can see from the table, my pattern is it's going up by 3, right? And you can see that here. It's kind of written weird, but it's right here, times 3, right? That's the number to be multiplied by x, even though it's behind it. So if I just keep adding 3 here, I'll get my pattern. So I'm going to do that. Instead of plugging them in and see what it is, I'm just going to add 3. Negative 9 plus 6, uh, 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Bam! Done. Okay. Now I can graph these. All right. Uh, the easiest way is just to plot the points, honestly. You could go from the graph. I mean, you could go from the equation. Um, where my... Uh, well, let's, let's try that. You could plot the points. We haven't done this yet going from the uh, equation, though. So it's going be fun. I know my y-intercept is right here. It's 0 negative six so let's see zero negative six okay and really even though it doesn't look like it i could simplify this right the distributive property three times x is three x three times negative two is negative six all right so that's where that comes this is the y equals mx plus b form right so that minus six hey there it is right here and there it is over here right this three, hey, here it is right here, change of three. And on my graph, it's gonna look like this, 
right? Remember, my, that, that's the slope in eighth grade. We call it slope, the rate of change. It's in order to go one square over, actually not square, I should say this, I should be very precise. In order to go one number over, because sometimes your squares aren't always one. In this case, they are, right? In order to get one number over, I have to first go up three numbers. So one, two, three, go over one, put a dot, okay? This can be sometimes be easier than plotting the points. Go up three, one, two, three, go over one. Go up three, one, two, three, go over one. Repeat as as much as you want. You're going to end up with as nice, you can actually go down three and over one the other way. You're going to get this nice, beautiful, straight line, which if you'll remember from, we've talked about this before, this makes a line, right? which means this is a linear relationship. All right, one thing, because it's only been six minutes, you know, I have your attention for another couple of seconds. Is this, is this a proportional relationship? Let me extra credit. You write right here, and I'm going to give the answer to it. You can write right here for extra credit, right on the side. Is this proportional? Is this proportional? Right, you do that, you answer that question, yes or no, with a little explanation of why, and I'll give you extra credit. As a hint, there's two ways of telling. You can either tell directly from the graph, actually there's three ways. You can tell from the table, whether all your ratios are the same in every row, or you can tell from the equation. All right, so is this proportional? You tell me yes or no. Tell me how you know whether you use the graph, the equation, or the table, and I will give you extra credit on this homework assignment. It'll be like 10%. So instead of getting 100%, you get 110%, something. All right, have an awesome weekend. See you on Monday.